What's up guys? I'm Isaac here at Tobacco Road Harley Davidson and today we're going to talk about the things that you should check on your motorcycle before you throw a leg over and go on a ride. So if you've taken one of our riding classes with us uh, through the Riding Academy, uh, then you'll know that the MSF or the Motorcycle Safety Foundation introduces the T-Clocks, Pre-Ride Inspection Acronym. So they recommend every time you're getting ready to throw a leg over this motorcycle that you should go through those T-Clocks. Now T-Clocks, what does that stand for? That's going to stand for our tires and wheels, our controls, our lights and other electronics, our oil and our other fluids, our chassis, and then of course our side stand over here. And together that's gonna to make up the T-Clocks. And so what we're gonna do is the MSF has a really cool uh, checklist uh, that you can go through and you can print it off yourself and it'll go through everything here for you. And so what we're gonna do for you is we're just gonna kinda of go through uh, everything real quick here for you on this uh, 2023 Harley Davidson Nightster Special. Uh, we pulled this one off the floor. It's been through our service department, so it's been all checked out, ready to rock and roll. And just to demonstrate, we're going to go ahead and roll uh, right through this T clock to show you kind of what that might look like on your motorcycle. So, getting started, we're going to start with T. That's going to be our tires and our wheels. So, let's see what it's looking like here. So, it wants to know the condition and the air pressure. So, condition, uh, it's a brand new tire, um, so we don't see any dry rot. Um, and you'll see that it still has little knobs on it. So that's a really good indication that's, that is a new tire. Uh, lots of good depth in there. You can use a depth gauge, uh, but we'll just kind of eyeball it for this one because we know it's brand new, so it should look pretty good. Air pressure, usually with stock tires, it's gonna recommend your air pressure uh, somewhere up here on the VIN, near the VIN sticker on the bike for the motorcycle cold. Now what that means is before we go drive this motorcycle up and down the road, we want to check it with the tires to have a cold air pressure. So uh, this, so what we can do is we can unscrew the little dust cap and we can uh, check the tire pressure there. The nicer is pretty cool because it'll actually tell us. Uh, so if we throw the switch on here, uh, the newer bikes with the uh, Rev Max motor, they're pretty sweet because what they'll do is they'll actually let us uh, go through and run our own diagnostics. So we can use our uh, pages button right here. And let's see. Check our pages. Uh, we'll go over to bike diagnostics and we'll see that right now reading 32 PSI in the front, 35 PSI in the rear. Good battery voltage. Um, and that's our temp, so we know it's already been warmed up a little bit because I drove it over here. So, cool. Uh, so that's good. We'll go ahead and cut it off. Now, for the specifics on a lot of this, for not only this motorcycle, but for uh, your own motorcycle, uh, something that you'll hear a lot of people say is they'll tell you to ask your mom or ask mom. And what that means is ask your motorcycle owner's manual because your owner's manual is going to be the owner's manual and or your service manual is going to be one of the most vital pieces of information you can have because that's going to tell you uh, most everything that you can check out on your bike uh, so make sure you've got one of those and that way you, you know go ahead and read it cover to cover and you might learn things your bike can do that you didn't even know or learn some of the safety features that are on or something like that but that marks off our tires, so let's talk about our wheels. So uh, spokes, wheels, cast wheels. So this is a cast wheel made to look like spoked wheels. Um, so we would just kind of make sure everything's, you know, nothing's loose, everything looks good. Uh, let's see, our rims, make sure they look good. Everything looks good and sealed all the way up around. No big bulges on the tires, everything's good. Uh, let's see, so now we'll start our bearings. Grab top and bottom of tire and flex. So I was, I'm gonna use one hand to hold the camera. But what we're doing is we're checking our bearings inside of our wheel here, making sure they're not wore out. So what you want to do is you want to kind of you'll grab both sides of the tire here and kind of press, turn it a little bit to kind of see if you feel any, any play in there that's not moved from the wheel. So let's see, seals, cracked, cut, or torn on those seals, primarily up in the bearings. And I don't see any excessive grease or anything anywhere, so that looks good. Uh, so now we're including our brakes. So we want to go ahead and check each brake alone, um, and then we'll check our... Uh, pads and our discs for wear. So what we're doing here is we're gonna look at our discs or our rotors. So we'll make sure everything's, and some of the some of this part could be hot, especially if you've been riding for a while. Uh, it's nice, has got nice Brembo, so they'll do lots of good stopping here. You wanna kind of feel it, make sure it's not, no excessive grooves in there. You, you would even, if you're feeling crazy, you can measure the thickness, make sure it's not too, uh, they haven't worn too much, they're in need of repair. Um, now on these bikes, or most of the motorcycle brakes, uh, you can actually look either behind here or through the other side, and you'll see there's actually a little window right there. And so that's a really good place to see uh, how what your gauge is. And we'll see, we'll line it up right here, and we can see that we've got plenty of thickness 
on this pad. So our brakes are good on that. Uh, and then of course we'll, we want to make sure everything we do on the front tire we want to check on the rear tire um so you know we'll, we'll come back here we'll check our pads they look good thickness on the rotor looks good you know no excessive gouging or anything like that uh check both sides of the tires the, both the front and the rear one and the cool thing about this sheet is that it gives you a little check off so if i had a pin i could just go through check everything off check it on the front 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 and on the rear so work our way right on down all right so that's it for T tires. So let's go ahead and drop in a C for controls. So we're looking at our handlebars. It's like our handle. We want to know, are they straight? Do they turn freely? Grips and bar insecure. Yeah, everything looks good. I can move it around a little bit. I mean, everything seems pretty sturdy. That looks good. All right. Let's see. Levers and pedals. How are they? Are they broken, bent, cracked? Look good. Our shifter looks good. Everything there looks good. Good. These controls, these levers are nice. Looks good. You adjust it if you need to. Get a little bit closer to where you want it. All our buttons look all right. Let's see. Same thing on the other side. The brake lever looks good. Well lubricated. Nice, good free play here. Looks good. Looks good. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, cables. Let's check out our cables. Make sure it's not frayed or kinked. Um, they look good all up through there. No excessive bends. Uh, brand new, so they look brand new. How about it? So hoses, yeah, let's check those. Yeah, that looks good there too. No fluid anywhere. Another really good indicator is uh, if, obviously to tell if your bike's leaking anywhere, um, is, you know, park it on a nice clean surface overnight, especially, um, you know, maybe even park it over a piece of cardboard or something in your garage. And that'll really be a good indication of if you're leaking any fluid anywhere. Let's go to throttle. So big thing we're looking for here is we want to know if it moves freely and if it snaps closed. So we'll go ahead and roll it on and it goes right on back. Roll it on, go right on back. Now, if you're doing that with a carbureted bike, you want to be a little bit careful because these uh, then this would have cables attached to the carburetor and you might be putting a little bit more gas than you want to into that carb. So it might make uh, a little extra spicy of a start there. So, all right, lights and electric. So we're looking at our battery. Uh, we want to make sure everything looks good there. Um, so we won't be pulling the battery quite out for this one, but you want to keep a good eye on it. the battery up on this one. It's actually up here underneath the radiator and it's brand new. So everything looks pretty good. And we were able to see with this bike that we were able to read our voltage that was coming off of it. Uh, let's see, headlamp condition, cracks, reflector, mounting, everything looks good. Uh, height's good. We want to make sure our height is good and our angle is good. Um, so the way you would do that, is one way it's pretty popular is you could actually park it your motorcycle in front of a garage door and what that can do is you can kind of see where the bulk of that light is aimed at we'll do make sure that works so let's turn our bike to the run position and we'll see we got a nice bright headlight going on in there and our turn signals look good those are all on all right so now we gotta make sure that they're working right so what we can do is we can look back use our brakes and we'll see that we'll see a little bit of light cutting on right there Looks good. All right, so now let's go ahead and try that left turn signal. Looks good. Looks good. And then we would do the same thing for the right. We cancel it. Um, easy way you can do it as well is to turn on your flashers, make sure those are working. That'll let you know. And we've got all of our flashers going just fine. Let's try that high beam right quick in case we need it. Cut our flashers off. Uh, we can, this one has the option to just to flick your high beam a little bit, or if you want to actually turn the high beam on entirely, you just flip it up like that. So, and all that looks good. Turn signals look good. Our switches, those are all good. We've been using that switch this whole time. Uh, let's see, mirrors. So, while you're parked uh, and you've got your gear on, go ahead, you know, get on your motorcycle, make that adjustment to your mirrors, and then uh, ride out. If you're riding and you realize you need to make an adjustment, it might be safer for you uh, when you're stopped next to go ahead and turn that mirror a little bit if you need to. Then our lenses and reflectors. So it looks like we've got, our, got good reflectors up here. They're not cracked. They're not falling off. Um, that looks good. And the lenses on everything are also plenty fine. So we've got nice good reflectors there. So that'll make our bike a little bit more visible to other riders and especially make the bike more visible uh, to cars if I have to park it there on the side of the street. So let's see, wiring. We want to do this kind of the same thing we were looking at earlier. So make sure our wiring actually coming up from here looks good as it's all going everywhere. Make sure there's nothing exposed anywhere and just make sure everything looks nice and tidy. All right, so now we're in oil and other fluids. So <clears throat> we want to check our engine oil. Uh, so this is important to do 
You want to make sure that this surface is a little bit kind of slanted to check the oil. Uh, but we want to check warm on the center stand or on level ground uh, with our dipstick. And so that's going to vary by model. Different models are going to recommend uh, if the oil should be checked while it's upright or if it's on the side stand. And if you have an ex and if you've changed the height of your bike or the uh, made it hot, taller or lower, and the bike's leaning more. Um, and that could also kind of throw things off a little bit. So you really, that's where it's extra important and check out what your motorcycle owner's manual is going to be telling you. So at least on this bike, we'll, uh, we would just unscrew this and that would uh, tell us our oil and, and we just pull that out, wipe it clean, put it back in and check what our level's at. Uh, let's see, gear oil and shaft drive. So this uses a belt, uh, so we're fine there. We don't have to check the oil in that. Uh, if there's oil in our belt, then we messed up somewhere. So with our gear oil, uh, the nicer on this Red Max motor, uh, it actually uses up a, uh, it's actually one sealed unit all there together. So it's gonna be using the same oil uh, for the crankcase as it is for the transmission. So that's only one only one place you have to check now. So that's pretty nifty. So let's see what else we got going on. Uh, hydraulic fluid uh, for our cylinders, calipers. Uh, good way to check is go, go ahead and squeeze your brakes. Uh, make sure you have good pressure through there. Make sure you're not leaking anywhere down there by the caliper. And kind of do the same thing for the rear brake. You don't want to push your bike over. Um, but make sure everything, you don't have any leaks anywhere there. So let's see, coolant. Uh, the Red Max is a liquid-cooled motor, so most Harleys you don't have to worry about checking coolant. Um, but on this one you will, so you'll have to check your owner's manual, and that way you can make sure you have the correct amount of coolant in this bike to help keep it nice and cool for when you rip it down the road, like this guy. <clears throat> All right, fuel. So we want to make sure our fuel is good, so make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere still. Um, everything looks good. This one's a little bit tricky, actually. I say tricky, it's just different. Um, so if we want to check our fuel gauge, or check our fuel tank here, we want to, oh, you thought, we want to go ahead and lift up the seat. So now we've lifted up the seat, so this is actually where your uh, tank is on this one. So we want to make sure that it's not leaking anywhere. Um, everything looks nice and tidy, sealed up well. A couple clicks, snapped back in. We got our key out. All right, so that's our oil and our other fluids on this bike. Um, and let's see our chassis. So, all right, let's go to our frame, look at our frame. Uh, that's gonna include our, <clears throat> uh, the overall condition, our steering head bearings, and our swing arm bushings. So go ahead and make sure everything on the frame looks looks good. And actually this frame's a little bit tricky or a little bit different too, because it's actually, the motor itself is a structural part of the frame. So instead of one big frame, the motor in it, it's the front end bolted to the motor and the rear end bolted to that. So pretty neat, helps you save a little bit of weight, make it a little bit stiffer. Uh, but <clears throat> everything looks, looks good over there. You'll check the other side, of course, make sure there's no excessive play uh, up there when we're turning the bars and then of our swing arm bushing here, we wanna make sure that's all good and that way uh, this section of the bike can pivot like it needs to. Let's see, now we're looking at our suspension, front forks, rear shocks. Good way to do that is to sit on the bike and actually kind of rock the bike forward a little bit, hold the, hold the front brake in, but kind of push the bike forward a little bit, uh, see if it's nice and smooth, goes, goes down like it should, uh, and make sure that you don't see any excessive fluid up in here or further going down the forks there. And on the rear one, uh, you know, of course you wanna make sure that they're nice. The bolts, everything's bolted up good. Uh, everything's right. You've got it set like you want to for your weight, your rock, if you have a passenger, their weight, and then if you have any excessive luggage. Let's see, now we're looking at our chain or belt. So most Harleys, they're also gonna be that belt drive. Uh, so you don't have quite as much maintenance like you would with a chain. Uh, pretty much the only Harley now with the chain drive uh, is gonna be on that Pan America. And it's a sealed unit, so it's not, you don't have quite as much servicing to do to it. Uh, but our belt, we want to make sure our tension's good. So go ahead and you've got a nice little sight window here. So you would actually put a, the right amount of force on it, push it up, and then kind of see how much deflection you have in there. And your other slip manual, that's going to tell you uh, what to look for in there. So let's see here. We've got our tension's good, lubrication's good, or sprocket. So really looking at making sure that the teeth are good on this pulley and that all these then the condition of the belt is good so make sure you're not missing any pieces there and then just overall fasteners making sure everything looks good you're not missing cotter pins and you got the right eclipse everywhere and everything looks pretty minty so lastly the stands now this is to check the center stand or 
and the side stand. Now, the only Harley Davidson is going to have that uh, center stand. It's going to be the Pan America. And some of the police bikes have center stands too, um, which is just going to be a, a big stand in the center of the bike, believe it or not. Um, but uh, most bikes are just going to have that side stand there. So you want to make sure that it's got smooth operation all the way through uh, and that it's, you know, if you start hearing it squeak when you're going back and forth, then it might be time to leave it up a little bit. Make sure it's not damaged, bent, broken, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Make sure the spring's on there good. And if you're putting the side stand down, you know, when you're swinging it out, uh, and if, 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 it feels, if it feels weird, chances are something might not be right. So that might be a good time to check those bushings in there, bring it here uh, to the service department, and have them check that out for you. So that's everything. That's our T-Clocks. We're ready to ride now, finally. So that's the big in-depth sheet to do on the bike. Um, so it's always, and that's another good reason to keep your motorcycle clean too. Keep it nice and washed off. So that way you stay cooler a little bit easier. It's gonna keep the paint looking nice and it's gonna be easier for you to tell uh, if there's any damage anywhere. That is our T-Clocks on this 2023 Harley-Davidson Nightster S. So thanks for riding or checking things out here with us. Um, you know, you can find these sheets up there on the MSF's website from the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. Um, of course, as always, ride safe and ride often, and we hope to see you out here at Tobacco Road, Harley-Davidson, sometime soon.